And welcome everyone to the Donny Kate Shill Show. It's the second week in a row, I believe. Because didn't we talk about something last week? I can't remember. But anyway, off the page, the current book podcast for the CBC channel. You can Google us anywhere. Just put in current book cast and you'll come up with everything. The YouTube, the Twitch, because we're, of course, live on Twitch currently. Um, yeah, you follow us on Twitter, Mitch692 and Halftime Joe. Or you can also follow Joe on Instagram if you want. Yeah, um, real quick. I, I think people, long listeners, long time listeners of the show will know that I've gone through at least two different uh, username switches. And low key, the other night, I, was, I wanted to change it to another one, but I had to slap myself and be like, no, this is for branding. I can't keep changing. You want me to change it again like two months ago as well? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I, I, I found another good name and then I figured out no, people already took it, but like they don't even use their accounts. But, so. Isn't that the worst? Yes, when you find out it's such a good name and then realize it's taken, but somebody or they just don't use it. It's like, come on, man, why you gotta be like that? I... But I'm pretty certain all that started when uh, Achievement Hunter got Let's Play as a YouTube channel, and everyone's like, shit, just get every name you can think of. Yeah, uh, but I, don't know. I, you know, I had to tell myself, no, gotta start changing it, because eventually I can't change some stuff. Like I can't change my PSN, you know. Yeah, you can. I, no, you, you can pay for it, can't you? Like Xbox? No, you can't. You, oh, yeah. People have had the same one for decades. Wow. Because you can't. I Get, thought you neither. Put your finger on so you like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. Bad. But yeah, we've got a decent size show. There's not really, well, all the news is from the solicitations that came out this week. So Pretty much. We're just going to jump right into that. And... Who's going to go first? Uh, whoever's first on uh, the console. So that's going to be me. Um, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, what ones to do? What ones to do? Uh, We're doing solicitation, everybody. I like how chat said you are a halftime Joe. Stay halftime Joe. To be fair, I just really it's wanted fast. to take out Joe out of the name. But yeah, okay. I mean, you you could, can't you? Yeah, but there's some stuff I can't change, like... But then, would you just want to be half-time? Yeah. Really? <laughs> nah, I, I, I will also have to enjoy... It's funny, because the halftime show, it's just, yeah. they rhyme. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know it's funny. That's what I thought <laughs> it was. <yeah. laughs> You're right. But, um, Avengers number 10, or in legacy numbering, 700. Um, we have about 12,000 variant covers... Uh, after 700 issues of saving the world, do you think the Avengers would be due some celebration? But instead, the whole world seems to be gunning for them, especially Namor's fearsome new defenders of the Deep and the reimagined Russian super soldiers of the Winter Guard. And that's not to mention the shocking surprise the US government has in store for our heroes, plus the all new agents of Wakanda, the mysteries of Avengers 1 million BC deepens, a key revelation concerning the restructuring of Wolverine, and the next startling new Avenger is revealed. I like the sound of that, personally. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good to me. I don't really see anything against it. Especially after the, the last issue, which I'll get to later on. But it's like, oh, you thought you know everything now, but there's actually tons of stuff you need to <sighs> I always yeah. love stuff like that. You thought you knew everything, but you really didn't. And it's nice to see that we're going to get some more on the uh, 1 million BC Avengers, and they say startling new Avengers, so I don't know... What are the covers? Let's see if they give anything away in the covers. Because the covers are really yeah. cool, especially the Alex Ross one. And I'm not an Alex Ross guy. But who could be that new Avenger? I have no idea. Unless it's Wanda. Just give me Wanda back on the Avengers. I kind of need her back. Even though Doctor Strange is there. But, but yeah, that's the first one. Um, First one for me, Justice League Aquaman Drawn Earth. This is kind of... I think it's a one shot. Yeah, it's a one shot, and it's the part one. It's not the prelude. It's just a part one of the new yeah. arc for Justice League, which is John Earth, which is going to be about Aquaman and Atlantis, and it's almost like he's got a movie coming out. Yeah. Feels yeah. like it's been a while since I've said that, to be honest. Um, but it says here, the Ocean Lords, ancient sea gods, with a grudge against Aquaman and Wonder Woman, invade the Earth with an alien army and flood the globe. As Batman, Superman, and Flash race to stop the waters from rising and turning everyone into aquatic monsters, Mara seeks the advice of an old enemy. Arthur must face down Black Manta or lose his connections to the ocean forever. Honestly, that, that art 
cut that cover in the one shot. It's such a good thing that the guy who's doing this one shot isn't doing the Justice League because it's Howard freaking Porter. The guy who was like, <laughs> whose art I probably dislike the most, yeah. and I. No, this, this is a this is a one shot uh, chat. They're saying five issues. This is a one shot Justice like, League the, Aquaman. The Drunner. story, the story is five issues. This yeah, is but this shot. is there's one one shot. Yes. Yeah. The 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 Justice League thing is going to be five. I'm specific, have... Yeah, I'm specifically talking about this one this one one shot. That's like the first part of the story. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I just, it's going to be such a drag to read this, to be honest. Howard Porter, he, God he, bless his soul, he has a job in this industry, and he's making <laughs> good money, he's making, I guess, I'm assuming good money and a living and, and all that. God bless his soul for being able to work the system, but I just, sorry, man, I well, I can't, hey, yeah, I don't dislike you, I just, I, I don't know, your art just doesn't resonate with me, to be honest, and it, I don't know. Well, I, whether people, I, I've, it's, I'm not the only one. I, I've seen a lot of people say it. There may be some people out there who really like his art. Good, to, good for you. I, I just think this is going to be such a drag to read because the art is going to be s- really difficult to get through. But I, I'll try. I'll, I'll try. I'll try really hard. Um, I mean, you don't have a choice. You have to do it. It's just- yeah. I mean, I just love the idea of the ocean lord, ancient sea gods. I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool. And if you look at the cover. Those designs with a better artist would be so amazing. Um, mm. But other than, like, this is cool. You know, well, this probably has something to do with whatever happened in Justice League, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman were having their own I'll version. I this, is, this yeah. is probably Manta doing Manta's thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for that one shot. Cool. Uh, my next one is going to be Ironheart number one because we did get the news that Rui Williams is officially going to have her own solo book. Um much to people's disgust, because for some reason you have to hate a character. No, if you don't like the character, then you're the character. But you know, um, it's Eve Ewing, not to be associated with Al Ewing, which it kind of blue balled me the entire announcement. I was like, oh, it's Eve Ewing. It's, I don't know who she is. But um, uh, yeah, um, there's another like 12 fucking variants in this one. Uh, the former star of Invincible Iron Man headlines her own solo series. When a group of world leaders is taken hostage by one of Spider-Man's old foes, Rui Williams will have to st- step up her game, and she'll be stunned when someone from back in Sweet Home Chicago enters her life. Champions artist Kevin Lebranda joins award-winning post poet Eve Ewing as Ironheart steps boldly out of Tony Stark's shadow to forge her own future. And it's about fucking time. That was the worst thing they ever did was introduce her in that book and just have her take it over. No, people say she's a bad character purely for that fact. Sure, Bendis didn't do the greatest job, but mm-hmm. oh well. So I'm hoping this might turn people around their character. I hope it actually gives them more of a character and like plays off what Zub's doing in Champions because what Zub's done is actually made her kind of interesting and vulnerable. So it's all good to me. Um, so I... You know, I'm going to try to get away from the big Drowned Earth event for my next one and just see if I have room in the last, like, for one last one and I'll talk about kind of the rest of it. But I want to get through these other big time solicitations besides the event. Because the event is going to be big, but there's other stuff that's coming out, such as Shazam number one, right? Jeff Johns, uh, Artist Del uh, Eagles, M? Eagle Shem? I don't know. How to, that's a wild name. Last thing. That's such a good last name. I could also hope that's his username on Twitter. Uh, but. The interesting thing is it's kind of a pseudo sequel to the New 52 run, uh, but not really, but it is because, uh, here it is, so it says uh, Teenager Turned Superhero, Billy Batis, Struggles to Balance School and Super Heroics, um, guess which one is more fun, uh, Bo and Shazam unlocks a shocking secret deep within the Rock of Eternity. It challenged everything he knows about the world's magic and his family's future as its champions. Also witnessed the bizarre team-up of Dr. Savannah and Mr. Mind as they set off to build a society all their own. Don't miss the start of an epic run in the making and Shazam and the Seven Realms begins. I, this is kind of a sequel to the New 52 run where at the end Mr. Mind was uh, going to team up with Savannah and it seems like uh, the Shazam Lee is here as opposed to the New 52 run where they that was mm-hmm. like the introduction, the origin to even them. Um, interesting to know, uh, the first all-new Shazam monthly title set in the DC Universe in almost 20 years. 
This is the first time Shazam has had a monthly title in 20 years. So what was the DC, the 52 one? Then? It was kind of like the back issues of Justice League. It had like uh, three issue, three really? pages or whatever at the what, end the of Jeff Justice Jones League. Wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really. It was at the end of Justice League, like ten or twelve issues, and there'd be like three pages on each or something like that. I don't know, maybe two pages. Uh, I just remember that at the end of every Justice League, for a certain for a couple months, there was a Shazam origin in the back, and eventually became a trade paperback. That's fucking wild. Yeah. So I I always thought that was an ongoing. That's n- crazy. Nope. It was a kind of one-shot story that was at the end of the Justice League New 52 run. I think written by Jeff Johns at the time as well. Nine times yeah, no, I think he might have just, Jeff Johns might have just written the first, like, six issues and then hopped off for Shazam. I can't recall, really. But, yeah, this, that's, um, Shazam first 20 years. Uh, like, crazy to hear, right? Even someone like you, you thought it was ongoing. It wasn't, so... Yeah. So he never had anything in the mid two thousands or anything like that. I mean, he was in stories, but he never had his own ongoing. Like this is the That's first time he's had an ongoing crazy. in the last twenty years. Like for real, for real, this is, it, it's wild. And he's been a popular character. I wouldn't say he w- isn't popular, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, Blue Beetle has probably had more runs than him in the last. Yeah, he years. has. That's, that's kind of. That's crazy. It's wild, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, there you go. It, it, it's just one of those things. Now Shazam is back. I'm interested to see kind of this set, little maybe sequel. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be an exact sequel because, of course, the video 2 was a little darker and it doesn't I'm seem like the tone you... is going to keep going. So it might be like a, a, a weird, like a pseudo sequel. Or it is a sequel, but it's going to be a different tone and stuff, you know? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. I, uh, I, I never knew it was a backup thing. Yeah. Uh, it comes out in November 21st. Super excited for that. 40 pages for the first issue. Big, big t- that, That's the longest he's going to have in 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. That's wow. You, you learn something new every day. I know, I, uh, real quick, uh, I know you disliked that art that first came out at a San Diego Comic Con. Uh, this dislikes. Um, too hard? Um, and a bit of an understatement. Okay, so you really, because you, you thought like the body parts and all that, you thought it didn't make sense. I mean, I, it, it's not a case of thought. It's like you just look at okay, it. Okay, it's, it's, but good. it's factually. When, when looking at this new art that they showed off in the solicitations. The new one looks good. Yeah, I thought the it looked, looked a whole lot better. I mean, the body still looks weird, but that's maybe because he's pushed into that little desk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that might be that, but it definitely does look better, I would say, especially like the shading. There's something weird with the shading in it that I really say, like. The, the colors on the other one were very like pastel y. Yeah, and this yeah. one just looks so much better, honestly. Yeah. So. Isn't Shazam getting like a Japanese thing as well? Beats me, bro. I never like, heard that. I, I saw like, a, like an, and not an, like a faux anime style Billy Batson. And I'm like, is that new? Is that like, what is that? I never actually looked into yeah, it. You, no, but you know, uh, I don't know. My next one, sticking with the big things, um, Infinity Wars number five of six, uh, introducing Loki's Cosmic Avengers. That's all the uh, station gives us. But we do have a cover of said Avengers, and it's of course Loki. Uh, there's Kang the Conqueror. You've got Emma Frost. You have the Hulk. Um, I believe that's Scott Lang Ant Man. It could be another one. Actually, it might be Hank Pym, for all we know the way they've been going. <laughs> and uh, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. So, it's a really, really crazy lineup. Um, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know how this is going to affect anything. But um, there's obviously a reason for it. And uh, I'm here for it. It's Infinity Wars. Duggan's been doing great. Is this for Infinity Wars, Duggan? Yeah, it is. Probably. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. It's going to be... I don't know how they're going to work as a team. I don't know why Miss Marvel's there in the slightest. She's not a cosmic character at all. But uh, it'd be interesting to see how this Hulk plays on the team because this Hulk is very um, not a team player at the minute. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to know if that's going to be Scott Lang or it's going to be Hank Pym. If Hank Pym gets out of the Soul World or whatever. But yeah, there's all that for that one. It's cool. I'm here for it, as always. Um... Where is it? Mine. Mine was uh, Doomsday Clock. I think it was number eight. I'm looking for it now. And mostly I bring it up for the fact that the cover that came out, you've probably seen it already. 
But is this the one with uh, the puppets? Yeah, 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 yeah. So is it, I thought that was number seven. That one. No, it's number eight actually. It comes out November twenty eighth. I think the seventh comes out in September, or is it six? Yeah. I'm not entirely sure, but I still think it's a twelve issue series, right? Was it? Yeah, it's twelve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's the main cover with uh, Superman and Doctor Manhattan puppets, and most likely Ozymandias. Somebody. Somebody initially thought it could be Black Adam because of the braces, but that wasn't when it was black and white. When it's colors, you can all see purple, goat. It's Ozzy, Ozzy I'm sorry, it's clearly Ozymandias. Yeah. See, some people say Ozymandias, I say Ozymandias. <laughs> pecan, pecan. I say, I've heard Ozzy. How do you say it? Ozymandias. I've heard Ozymandias before. Ozymandias. I think Ozymandias. Actually, how, how do I say it? I can't remember. Uh, you say Oz, 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 Ozymandias. I say Ozymandias. Ozymandias. Oz, I just tried I, to fool you on that one. See, now that doesn't sound right to me. It's like pecan, pecan, you know? Hold on. No, we're going to do. No, we're going to do. <laughs> Google. Okay, Google. We're not sponsored. How do you say Ozymandias? Here is a matching video. Oh, fuck you. You could have just told me. <laughs> What's it say? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Google. We're not sponsored by Google Come in on. any sense, but we Come should on. be after this. Ozzy Mandius. Ozzy Mandius. Actually, I think that's how you say it, right? Because I say Mandius. Ozzy Mandius. It sounds because I'm, I'm all, almost saying it in a Spanish way because Diaz yeah. is a Spanish I've name. Heard, I've heard the way you say it before, but yeah. there's that live debate of like, which one is it? Chat, how do you say it? Pecan, pecan, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I don't know. Liam doesn't even know how he says uh, it. But I mean, I, I alternate. I honestly can't tell you which one I say the most. I'm one of those people that says pecan one day and pecan the other day. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I don't do that, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I'll say Ozymandias and Ozymandias, like it just doesn't matter. But yeah, seems like he's in control of them. He's still the puppet master as we were not led to believe because we were led to believe he was sick and dying and they were going to help him, them two together, something like that. It's, it's been very confusing, Doomsday Clock as a whole, when you have to, like, when you think about it all, because it's been so long apart that it's hard to remember yeah. some of the stuff from the past, like the first couple issues. Um, except the standout ones, like the uh, like the butterfly one. I really like that one. I know you didn't like that one, but I really like that one. Yeah. Um, just, just quickly, chat saying Oz a man Dias. Oz a? I thought it was Ozzy. That's that's wild. Oz Oz a man Dias. Uh, Ozzy, I've Oz never a heard man that. Dias. Ozzy See, man I'm... Dias. Yeah. See Ozzy man Dias. Yeah. Ozzy man Dias. See, the more I've said, the more it's like, like it doesn't <laughs> sound right in my head anymore. But I know I say it. That <laughs> it way. doesn't sound right to me either. It's kind of like how you you. You, you know sometimes when you're writing something and you say yeah, you say this just, word all the time, right? Sound, yeah. yeah, it just looks and sounds wrong, but it's right. <laughs> the worst word for that is gum, G U M. Gum? Gum, gum. No, that's re- easy. The, like the worst, the worst word for gum. that would have to be, what would it be? Not effective. What was it? Isn't there's one word a hundred percent always forget how to spell when it's such the easiest word. It almost might be because, and that might be just be because I say cuz a lot. Like, C-U-Z, like, I write that a lot. I mean, most people do that, didn't they? Yeah, but that, uh, that's why I think because, like, did I spell because, right? See, I did a mistake of I put cause. Aluminum. To, short, to shorten. Aluminum. Well, I mean, you, you guys spell aluminum wrong and say it wrong anyway. To be fair, Spanish people say aluminum. Aluminum. That's, that's because that's correct. Yeah, but English uh, speakers say, or at least American speakers say uh, aluminum. Yeah, because in Queen's English, there's Whoa, an extra welcome I to that you heathens took out. Spell or learning of the <laughs> alphabet with us. I don't know, but it's yeah, the page. There you go. Letters are on a page. He's there. There's gonna be something Superman men had, and I'm assuming this is the first time they meet. You know, eight issues in. Yes, it's gotta be. Yeah, yeah. Because we haven't seen either of them since issue one. No, we saw November. we saw Clark once, one more time, one more time. I think it was six, I think it was five or six. I can't remember, but I oh, know so like three months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If not, longer. but yeah, you know what I mean. We saw him about that time. I just don't remember which one exactly. I'm telling you, it's such, I can't even remember seeing him. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to remember all these uh, eight, whatever how many issues has been because there's so much time that has passed between. If they were monthly, it'd be so much easier. 
Yeah, it doesn't help. It's boring as shit as well. Um, I mean, um, I enjoy it, but all right. Yeah, that's pretty much now, it. Now on to t Tony Stark Iron Man number seven. This is the strangest dissertation I've ever read in my life, and you can tell Dan Slott wrote this, right? It's Stark re Retailers Part 2, so obviously the arc's finished what we're on now. Uh, he goes, strapping for another high-tech adventure with Tony Stark and Janet Van Dyne as Iron Man and the Wasp take on a two-ton terror of shush, pretend you're still reading a, a solicitation for an upcoming comic, look natural, they're everywhere and they're watching you. <laughs> Your good. world is a lie, you need to look. You need to get to the Eastgate, but Motherboard will protect you, I have to go now. We'll try to get another message to you in the pages of Tony Stark, Iron Man number seven. It is imperative you get your hands on a copy. Now laugh as if you've read something funny. Don't mention this and what's going on with Jocasta. Will this be her last stand? Find out in our next issue, True Believer. I really it's like, like Thanks, Dan Slight. You could have told me anything. <laughs> no, but no. So, yeah. Um, I don't like it because that sounds like bad stuff with Jocasta and we can't lose that snack because she's a snack. But, yeah. yeah. The cover's crazy as well. People are speculating that it's Venom. Uh, I think it's more of a metaphorical thing. Like he's getting swallowed up by the suit, but there's a naked Tony Stark with long hair on the cover. So. <laughs> um, all right, I guess uh, going to um, my next one. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Heroes in Crisis. I think this is going to be such a great series, right, with Tom King. Have you seen the Harley Quinn with the booster mask uh, yep, art? Yep. That is amazing. Oh, my gosh. And plus, uh, there's some other covers, I think, by Souk. Oh, this is bound to be, at least, if, if anything, a great book to look at. Yeah. Especially with all the uh, variant covers. But uh, So it says right here, The Man of Steel versus Booster Gold. Superman finds out the hard way that Booster can be a formidable opponent when his back's against the wall. Of course, being the prime suspect in a superhero massacre. Uh, was exposing And exposing a secret trauma hospital for metahumans would do that just that. Meanwhile, Batman and the Flash combine the detective skills. Because, yes, Flash has detective skills, people. Sometimes people forget about that. Remember the Flash TV show in the first episode pilot when he was Sherlock and then he wasn't? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, so, yeah, Batman and Flash combine the detective skills to investigate what went... Uh, R, R, I don't even know how to say A-W-R-Y. I never know how to say that word. Eerie? Is it eerie? Arai? Arai? A-W-R-R-I. I think it's Arai. Right, yeah. Yeah, won't win a right. I never really have to say that. I read it too much, but I, I, I don't really say that in, you know, everyday life. Who says that in everyday life? Um, I, I mean, some a lot of people, I suppose. I, I Shit's gonna ride. That's See, that's kind of... that's stuff you read in books. You don't. I don't think that's a word you say. I, I, I mean, you, you read a lot of words in books like the and and. Yeah, and, but that uh, a right it... is such a word that <laughs> you only really say it if you're like an English teacher or something like that. Don't um, be so erroneous. What does that mean? <laughs> erroneous means wrong. I tell you what, I have been waiting to use that word properly for about four weeks now. It was, was it my like word, the word of the day for you? Day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was like, I need to use erroneous. I just kept forgetting. So thank you for... Uh, uh, okay, so to detective skills, investigate what went or I had sexuary and uncover a serious glitch in the system, not to mention explosives, spoiler freak secret uh, other than that i just think it's just great that booster good is getting the uh like uh the limelight in this book and you know he recently was uh in a couple maybe less than a year ago probably a little bit more he was in a man of steel like book he was in a superman arc um what else was he and he was recently in a uh, miracle man uh miracle man i'm mr miracle i said miracle man but uh yeah it's, i don't know booster seems to be getting a boost uh no other better ways to say it in some of the stuff he's showing up in. I'm glad. I, I love Booster Good. I think he's a great character. I think he's fun. He's interesting. Um, I think people call him boring. Just don't know his character at all. So I'm hoping eventually he gets a movie or TV show with all this boost that he's having. There is um oh wasn't it Greg Berlanti supposed to be doing the him and, and had a Ted Cord one? I don't know which one yeah. I would want more a Booster and Beetle. Uh, like Ted Cord one or a Jaime Reyes one? I don't know. I think well, those two would be great. What would you need Ted Cord to be in it? Because that's the relationship, isn't it? I think you would. I, you well, you don't. You can have a booster and Jaime one because. Or, or would you like merge the two? So it's like Jaime Reyes, but it's actually Ted Cord. No, I just you you well because the people won't get it though. If you because there is a, a an arc I remember where Booster found Jaime and taught him, like, a Mr. Miyagi, because, like, he reminded him of Ted and certain things, like, I want to, 
I promised Ted to help the next Beatle, you know. And the only people, it, it wouldn't make sense in the movies if you just do it straight off the bat. The only people who know that relationship will understand it, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, no, I, you, you it, probably You think that could work? Like in a little Incredible Hulk yeah, in, the, in the beginning type thing, you show their little relationship and then him dying, and it's like Booster feels I mean, bad. I mean, you, you could make that the the first movie. I always thought of it as a, a Mr. Miyagi, uh, you know, type of Karate Kid type of movie with Booster and Jaime. I always thought that would be a great movie, you yeah. know, except I mean, you, you know how Mr. Miyagi's like wise and silent and cool. You got the loud mouth dumbass. Yeah, basically not cool at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think it'd be funny. And Jaime's like, is this really the guy who's supposed to teach me? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I just think that'd be great, man. I, I love Booster and I'm glad to see him uh, get the spotlight here in Heroes in Crisis. I, I'm so excited for this book. I think it comes out in October because I think it's bi-weekly or is, it week, uh, or is it monthly? If it's monthly, it comes out September, which is great. No, it's September it comes out, yeah. Okay, yeah. September, the first one. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. It's, there's going to be long pages, but not, it's what I want. I thought it was a great idea, so yeah. I'm, I'm a bit worried about it because really? there was that D, there was that DC leak that came out and uh, they're going, oh, it's a mess and all this and all that. And then... They also said about Cedric leaving Justice League Dark. It's like, yeah, to be fair, they only got the issue number wrong on that. And everything so far has been right. It's just like, uh... I mean, I... I'll read here and questions for myself, obviously, and for my own opinion, but... Uh... I, I didn't see those leaks. I think you mentioned at least the Cedric one, um, which yeah. I still don't even I mean, remember I'm what not, you said I'm about not, that. I'm not going to sit here and say... Because they, they say... Spoilers for the book, so I'm not gonna. Okay, yeah, don't 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 spoil the book. Yeah, I'm. This is one I'm really excited about. I don't want to get spoiled on it. But that'll be the test. To all right, that sounds good. So, um, have I done all mine? Have no, I got you one? have two more. Have I got two more? Yeah, I do. We're. I mean, we're taking up as much time as we can with this. I mean, I'm not rushing. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Um, but um, despite being a Donny Kate Show show, um, I have to bring it down for a second because. I was attacked the other day. Okay. Needlessly, senselessly, and violently. Um, there was no need for it. Oh no, that's your Whatso- last one. Yeah. Whatsoever is my last one. Yeah. That's what I'm much good. Um, but Death Three Humans number five. Um, for some reason they felt the need to flaunt the fact that Lockjaw's dead. Spoilers, people haven't read the first issue of that, but it's been like two months now. Um, so yeah. There's a variant cover with Black Bolt over Lockjaw. Um, but this kind of confirms that Black Bolt didn't die in the last one. He just has no voice, I'd imagine. Yeah. Uh, but this is 5 of 5. It's the final stand, as it says. The royal family's been broken. Now something new and terrible rises from its ashes. Who is Vox? Where are the humans he's killed? And what lies ahead for a king without a kingdom? Um, so, yeah. I, I might press charges for the senseless act against myself, but I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. Um, all right, so this would be my last one. And I mean, I was just gonna, I was gonna go over kind of more of the, the, the drown or Aquaman drown, but now I'm gonna actually switch it up. And I, I think I'm gonna go this, this weird one. I have no idea where this is from. It's uh, Steve Orlando and He's making like a weird team called uh, Electric Warriors. I think it has a Ray and a Dominator in it from from my understanding of the cover. Um, That's right. Yeah, so a new tale of the future DC Universe set in a previously unexplored timeline, the Cosmic Dark Age. Years after the Great Disaster, the Earth has started to rebuild and rejoin the Universal Coalition. In order to prevent a galactic war, different worlds throughout the known cosmos have created a new system of competitive combat to give each participating planet their own voice in the intergalactic struggle. Each world has one diplomatic gladiator chosen to possess the electric seed and fight for their homeland as the electric warrior. Each fighter forsakes their personal life in the name of peace. So what happens when Earth can't choose a sequel combatant and sets two instead? The Bruiser Warcry represents the humans of Earth, while Deep Dweller, a shapeshifter from the Octopus tribe, represents the animal kingdom. Can they maintain one common goal where they tear Earth's tenuous coexistence to shreds and destroy the rest of the universe with it. Oh, and Warcry also has the powerful relic from Earth Pass, Superman's cape. Okay, so it isn't the Ray. But it's a weird kind of like inspired by the DC universe because it has Superman cape and it has a Dominator in it. And has a, yeah. yeah, so 
interesting. It's a miniseries, one of six, so there's that. Um, I'm definitely going to, I'm interested just based off the cover and reading it. I w- started to get even more interested, especially that the powerful relic is Superman's cape. Like, what yeah. if Superman even, his cape, like the S on the back, is still withstanding even after he dies or whatever? Mm. You know, that that's that's going to be wild. I, I don't know, but uh, I'm interested. Steve Orlando's good. I... If I remember correctly, he really he did the really good one shots of Justice League of America that I liked. Um, I think the overall series was doomed to fail just because of that team and how they kind of forced certain characters on there, and you know, it yeah. sucks for that. I think he's a good uh, writer, but you know, Lobo didn't need to be in that book. I don't even think Killer Frost needed to be on that team. It's yeah, I just I don't know. I thought it could have been better, um, and also Batman was forced on that team. I did not like that. I thought. I thought the premise of the Justice League of America Rebirth series was really good, and what it stood for and what they initially thought it was going to be could have been great. But I just they forced too many characters in there that shouldn't or that didn't need to be in there. So yeah, uh, Electric Warriors, I'm down for it. I don't. Even, this is so new. It's like uh, okay, let's go with it. Sweet. All right, I think that's gonna uh, be it for solicitations. I'll say that's our solicitations talk yeah. for November 2018. I can't remember if I said November or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah, on the comics of the week for the 22nd of August, 2018. I almost said 28, 28 you then, thinking of the <laughs> fucking graphic card. It's like, no, it's 2018. But um, carrying on the order we're going, my first one's Venom number five. Um, yeah, Donny Cates again does it. It's you know, just as good as it has been. But... Um, a lot of people have been like, why has Venom got wings? It looks stupid. No, 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 no. It's just like, it's Venom. Who cares what he's got? <laughs> you no, know, it's got a legitimate reason behind it. He's connected to the Clint Tower again because of Noel trying to burn, quote, the light out of him in his connection They're like all the character development he's had over the years. Um, and, of course, the symbol is, it was originally a spider, but it's more the Grendel, like the ancient symbiote that's been going around. So it's a combination of two. So of course he would have wings if the first one had wings. So yeah, he it's just more him like explain to Eddie Brock what he can do now, like and what actually happened. Um we find out that Rex, the old Vietnam guy, isn't actually a guy. He's a symbiote cuz Rex died in the war. So the symbiote just took on Rex and walked around as him. Now, you, you get a bit like it unravels why Venom was going crazy earlier on. It's like it's like the animalistic instinct where like the the weaker one bears its teeth to the alpha and shows its belly and all that. So that's, that's cool. why like, it, it's you know, it's this typical Donny case. Like he, there's all there's a reason for everything he's done. Like, Chad all... Ch- makes a point. He can manipulate his body, can he? And why can't he make wings? Exactly. Yeah, you know, Carnage makes axes out of everything why is it crazy that Venom I just think nobody thought of like to give him wings Donnie was like no why didn't has anybody thought of giving him wings they're like no and they're like all right then it's like the symbiote's a space dragon like why not I mean it's essentially you know oh I I like to think of like this for everything but you know the green lantern if you could think of it you can make it yeah yeah and I think if he wants to make a gun that spits out symbiote little liquid I don't see why not right he makes a gun that spits out symbiote liquid. Yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. I feel like you could do really anything with that. And I doubt the movie's going to be as creative as this series is. When does he have a gun that spits out symbiote liquid? No, he doesn't. But I'm just saying. That oh, I, I thought you were saying he does. I was like looking through it. No, w- wouldn't he be able to do that? Like he, I mean, I, um, I, maybe. I mean, in theory, I suppose. In theory, in theory, if his body can be manipulated and he can have um, wings, I'm assuming he can pretty much, if he can think of it, he can probably make it. And, you know, so... If he yeah. wants to have a key for a keyhole, why not? I don't see why he can't do that. Uh, as chat says, it's a very Deku move. You know, he just simply never thought of doing it. Oh. <laughs> Admittedly, in this one, it's not a case of he couldn't do it or he didn't think of not doing it. It's a case of he couldn't do it. Like, you know, when he split off from the Clinton, he yeah. lost half his powers. So having him have a half connection actually gives him more powers. Like, you know, they can be like Dude, that's teleconnect. Cool. Yeah. It's really cool, you know. It, it it just makes Venom interesting. I hope they keep it though, so like when they sever the connection again or something, that he still keeps his powers or he's able to have more power than before, you know, to to keep it interesting. I Who mean, knows what like, he could do? Like the way they ended this off, where Venom and Rex quote that symbiote merge. Yeah. You no, know, they could cut him off, but he could merge with another one. Yeah. 
and you know, mer- you know, maybe he merges with the Grendel and the- he has the wings and all that, and he can do other stuff. Well, you know? And the cover for the next issue, he has just guns all together. He doesn't have symbiote yeah, guns. He just has guns. It's nineties as fuck. It's like I'm pretty certain Life L drew that. He didn't, but I'm pretty certain yeah, Life pretty had I wish it was symbiotic, like guns, like little liquid pellets would come out or something. That'd be cool. That'd be wild. I, I just thought of it as like a grill. It sounds game. very much like a video game, and you have like your little projectile option. Well, see, like, so what like... does Green Lantern shoot with his guns? I'm assuming just Green Lantern, like, force will pellets, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, well, I'm going into my first one, which is going to be talking about. Uh, let's see. So, we're going to be talking about Action Comics, uh, 1002. Wow, 1000 Comics. Um, I'm Sound a bit more enthusiastic about this one, Joe. Mm. Uh, I mean, am I supposed to be? I don't, I don't know. Like, it's it's <laughs> Bendis isn't really doing anything new or like that wild. I thought the cool thing was that he brought back Guardian, mm. and you know the you know the art style changes in the comic, so it's like it was a little jarring at first in certain pages, but uh, I mean it's. Alright, it's just like it's lower level stuff, which I like. I don't really want to get onto it because I, you know, I just have to get through the arc, and I probably won't read it anymore. <laughs> I'm just tired of Endis already, and he's barely been in DC so for he's like, done like. He hasn't even done like twenty issues. Yet. How long has he been? Six months or more? More, more over or under six months? I can't remember. Well, man is well. I mean, he's been there for like nearly a year at this point, but really, it's been that long. Yeah. I swear. I mean, you been... think? He, he, well, like, he has to have done, hasn't he? Like, yeah. you know, he he was at least working on Man of Steel around this time last year because it's only a couple of months until it was a year when he had to go in the hospital. Oh, you're right. You're right. Died, yeah. So. And that delayed him writing every, like the last of his Marvel books and the first of his DC books. So it's been a while, but yeah, but I'm looking really tired of him. Um, <laughs> well, I guess his first book did come out at, yeah. at sometime this year. So I say, if you think Man of Steel was what a six issue, five issue weekly, I, I the credit I'll give is it seems like with Action Comics. They're trying to go more the let's focus on Clark Kent route and kind of his life at the Daily Planet. What can he do that Superman can't? Like, can he get into places maybe Superman wouldn't be allowed to and stuff like that? So, yeah. uh, I'll give him that. Um, and you know, like I said, the art Loki jarring uh, when it switches uh, mm-hmm. from right now and then. Like, but I, what I did like is it, it seems like it was the guy who did the Teen Titans, I think, Rebirth, like the first issue where it has like a a stroke all around the characters like an outline and they're different colors yeah. which i like yeah. but um yeah. yeah i mean it's it's fine i i i i always cool to see clark getting at a bar at a club and you know i i'll just give him that that he put clark in situations that usually some people don't try so i'll give him that now would you read bendis and anything else what do you mean well what, let's say when he's done superman action comics and they announce his next title at dc would you read it it depends on the character, but um probably... Rough is Blue Beetle. Sure, yeah, but I mean if it was a flash I'd read it too. Um yeah. but I I I I mean if it was I'm trying to think of a character I wouldn't read. If it was uh Well let's say Bendis does bat. Yeah, probably not. I'm off. Yeah. I I mean if he does Martian Manhunter, I'm probably off too, to be honest. If he does uh I doubt he'd do Wonder Woman. But I'd probably I don't know. There's only certain characters that I'd read, regardless of writer slash artist. Yeah. So I, I don't. But I'd, is this yeah. is this one of them? Superman. Yeah. Yes, but at the same time, I. I you just don't like a Superman. No. I don't know. It just feels weird. I'm in this weird spot where I love Superman. And I would re- read regardless. I mean, clearly I read because I was reading even in those Tomasi freaking uh, arcs of random like going off to washington dc or something like that you know so i i guess i'll still read it i only say i'm gonna stop just because darn you bendis but uh <laughs> i i'll probably still read it to be honest i'm just fooling myself to get i'm gonna stop reading it that's fair that's yeah, fine uh, it's fine like it, it's <laughs> It's not necessarily as bad as like the ending, like the, the middle of Man of Steel or something, but 
Or well, the end of Man of Steel, because I was trying. I, 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 even to then, I, I enjoyed certain parts of it, but yeah, I just, it's not, it's not as bad. It's, it's almost like a, a about or maybe a little bit under the beginning of Man of Steel 1, so it, it's all right. I mean, if it's slightly under Man of Steel 1, Man of Steel 1 was great. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Super, yeah. Even chat remember that. Superman Family Road Trip. That, that was a pretty good issue, not gonna lie. It was a little, like, <laughs> Clark giving John. And that was the good times, you know, when they were having family road trips, and now John is nowhere to be seen. And he's probably gonna return a man, because knowing Bendis, this yeah, is an equal yeah, way to is. kind of age him up, like, six years, yeah. have him be 18 or something. Yeah, so our time works differently in space because yeah. different planets and yeah, locations the and interstellar stars, route. <laughs> and, and I watched Interstellar once. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, listen, he was. It was either you age him up or get rid of him altogether. I'd rather him age. I'd rather age him up if, instead of get, get rid of him. To be honest, I yeah. I I, I want to see what uh, what people's ideas are of John when he's older, and it's probably gonna be the edgy route of like I'm the ex. Oh yeah, he'll be. An edgy, he'll, he'll probably make him more like the old Superboy. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna have the jacket, right? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. yeah. I can already see it, but uh, yeah. Chat his Bendis' his first DC book was technically Action Comics One Thousand. He did the ending story in that, which is Man is still zero issue kind of. Yeah. So you go. But if you want to say his actual actual book, it was a uh, Man of Steel. So which chat, chat saying was in May. Probably. But so it's yeah. been it's been like three months, which makes sense. Um, my next one is Avengers. I can't wait. Issue number is it? What issue number is it? Issue number six or 696. Um, I love the way Aaron opens this book up. It's like everything in like the world is kind of like crying and screaming because the celestials and all that stuff. So like the, the, um, the man thing shrieks at the sky and the Everglades, the ebony blade is crying blood, this, that. Uh, the only thing I find weird is he says the star brand is going through the sky looking for a new host. And it's like, that's not how the star brand works, Aaron. But, um, you've got the excuse of secret wars made everything new but different so you can do everything slightly differently from now on <laughs> um yeah he just goes through like, all this other stuff like the dragon and kun lun roars because they all know like they're about to get fucked with these celestials but, um and they get pretty close to it but um another thing that aaron changed was how the uni mind works because of course they um, Icarus and the Eternals gave Tony Stark the Unimind for a reason, because it's the only way you can beat the Celestials. Unicron? Um, oh, Unimind. Unimind, yeah. yeah. Where they all have to connect and they, they all they, become one. Everything has to be Uni for some reason. Well, it's because Uni's one, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like you that weird thing. You have to come together and be one. Yeah, it's true. Like, you know. Also, there's a weird art thing in this. They give Carol green powers, and it's like, her powers aren't green. Uh, it's only an artist thing. But unless I missed something with that, I'm not sure. But um, another thing I that was a bit weird was how he did the celestial quote zombies that he calls them in this, or what Tony Stark calls them. It's like they're there for a panel, you don't see them again, and then you see them again randomly. And it's like, are they actually there, or was Tony just seeing everything? Like, I couldn't quite figure that one out, but that's more of an art side because there's a lot going on in these panels, like an absolute fuck ton going on. Um, go, like Ghost Rider being in a celestial, he's kind of going batshit crazy. He's learning like everything, and he turns out to be the unit. Well, they kind of use him as the unit mind, despite unit mind being an actual thing that gets made when you make a unit mind. But again, Secret Wars, it's all the same, but it's slightly different. But yeah, so he, nah, he, they get rid of the horde from the unit mind. The celestials are somehow there again. Um, they push back the Dark Celestials. We actually, you know, what was the thing they learned about the primordial stuff? Let's see. I can't remember what it was. Um, Chat was it? I can't remember what it was called. Um, but you know, yeah, they they all learn that their gods vomit uh, acid. They're the um, oh, they're the cure for the horde. That's what it's called. So yeah, it's like the reason why the Celestials left them alive instead of just wiping them out is because it's like, oh, we're sick with the Horde anyway, so like, let's let them be here and, you know, they'll eventually help us wipe it out. And of course, it all turns out to be part of Loki's plan because he's like, hey, welcome back, Avengers. Yay. Yeah. It all turns out to be Loki's plan. Yeah. I mean, like, you, we, you kind of knew that in a way anyway, 
especially like how he's been going through like Thor and Avengers and other stories. You know, it, it, yet again, there's a little, there's a link between Jason Aaron and Donny Cates in the minute. Because, you know, Donny Cates piggybacked off Jason Aaron's got a thunder run for Venom. It's like, oh, look, the black guy or the black knight with the sword, the necro sword. That was the symbiote god. You know, and this is like, oh, remember that time when I was the Sorcerer Supreme? And that was all because I was trying to do this. Da, 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 da. And it's like, yeah, you two are piggybacking off each other. I can see. Like, you can't hide from me. But yeah, it was a solid, it was a solid end to the arc. A bit cra- like The biggest issue with this is how the art portrays some stuff, but that you, you sometimes when you've got stuff like this you can't help it so, there's just so much going on <sighs> also carol's going to be off the team for a little bit because the life of captain marvel happens oh so, yeah <laughs> yeah because uh she has an ongoing series really quick uh mini series oh mini series yeah uh, i i just love that aspect of my comics or something it's like yeah they got a, something they have a thing to do they'll be back yeah. And when she comes back, she will have long hair because in Life Captain Marvel, she has long hair. Yeah, well, also, are. expect a time jump because I believe that uh, her series jumps nine months ahead. So when she gets back on Avengers, assume it's been nine months from this issue to then. I think it's nine months. It's something like that. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I got Justice League Dark number two. Um, that per Tinian, uh, as usual dialogue heavy book um but it, it had like really great twists i love the idea of what he was trying to pull off here and how he kind of also gave a little origin to kind of naboo and all the magic with him and stuff like that because I'm, I'm sure there was always stuff like that already in the comics but that's probably like 60s stuff from just a society level you know golden age Hey, I, I've read some stuff back from back then, but you know it's like certain movies from the '60s and '70s. It's not like I've seen all of them. I've seen certain, I've, yeah. you know, only read seen certain ones. So if somebody says, "Oh, they've always had this," listen, Matt, that's cool. You read Golden Age stuff. I kind of have other stuff to do. So <laughs> I thought, and even then, this might be like a retelling and a different version of it. Um, yeah. But it's kind of like. These old sorcerers or whatever, they're powerful. They were so powerful, and the way to stay in this world and their power to be uh, always here and stuff like that was to put themselves or put their powers in a item in which they would guide people who would use the items to basically be them. So, yeah. I I thought that's a cool idea in the way uh, Tinian explained it, and kind of how Naboo was taking a huge turn out of nowhere. It's yeah. Like, also, uh, rest in peace, the DCU uh, Doctor Fate. Why would that? <laughs> he's be? now. A, oh yeah, the guy. He's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, now yeah. a jar. <laughs> I was, so, oh, here's this guy. Let's just put him away. <laughs> I thought that was a nice little like uh, like a reference it's to. A, it's a nice little like we haven't forgotten about him, but you're not gonna have anything to do with him. Like he's here, but and then he just gets erased essentially. Um, I mean, he, he's the vase, isn't he? Yeah, but then he gets brought out, and then he kind of disappears like dust no it's because he drops the vase which breaks him out oh but then, he, he then turns back into the vase oh like, i see I, the way i saw it was that dr fade had like made him disappear before he was able to say nah, anything. Nah, i'm gonna nah. look at it real quick because uh i'm very curious so can we just point out how good the opening to this issue is oh he does go back yeah um what do you like mean? The opening of this issue with like Diana and the witches oh, and they're all oh, like yeah. merging in with each other. That's so cool. Like just the way the art like portrays yeah, them. Yeah, like, Tinian is really other. good at execution. That's yeah, it. you know when we always so... say Scott Snyder isn't that great at execution. He has great ideas, but it's just weird of how he sets them up and places them. Tinian is just is so great at that and how he works little details and stuff around. And to be honest, I, I could see like I said in the first issue, I could see this as a Justice League Dark movie. Yeah, because yeah. there's that one also, part also at the very Diana... end with the upside down man. I'm like, bro, I see that at the very end of the first act or something like that. 100 percent see that. Yeah. So, um, does Diana have that branding under the tiara? See, and is that why she wears it? If that's like a little retcon, that is awesome retcon hmm. they made. I, that Tinian thought of. Uh, 
Because, you know, she always has that on, and we just assume nothing of it, but if there's something actually in play there, that it is not only on there for that, but maybe to hold back, like, a certain dark magic. Because remember... It's, it's, it's going to have something. You no, know, because there is, like, there is going to be a crossover or whatever between Justice League Dark or Wonder Woman. And it's I think, not a crossover. Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> what, I, I don't care what you call it. I just know it's uh, two-in-one. People will have their own things. I just want to say that whatever it is, crossover, tie-in, I don't care. It will play into it. Whatever that is. No, it will, because it says it. It literally, you can... If you read what that was about and saw the covers, you know what it's all about then. Because in that, especially in the covers, they kind of show that Wonder Woman goes evil, quote unquote, right? And I'm assuming whatever she has branded oh, yeah, on her forehead yeah, is the yeah. witches, right? And the yeah. tiara is kind of like this gate to hold back the evil power. And somehow somebody's going to take it off of her and the evil power, and they're going to like activate or something like that. It just makes a whole, like you could just. From this issue, you understand how that next whatever uh, tie-in yeah. crossover thing is gonna work, um, which is great in my opinion. I think. Also, yeah. what like what is it with DC in the Justice League book and old stuff being purple? I don't know. I like the color purple, so I don't know. I mean, I love the color purple, but Umbrax, the ultraviolet stuff, is purple. The the flames for the old like the Magic Guards purple, <laughs> like. What is it with purple? Like, purple's cool. No, or is it yeah, purple like, kind of gives like this ominous black. feeling, I guess. And especially yeah, the purple they make, though. Purple, yeah. black, and white. Also, well, I'm going to say it for Joe. It's a Naruto reference. Is it? Yeah, a Sasuke thing, isn't it? The black flame. Oh, I didn't even think of that, to be honest. Honestly, I honestly didn't think of that. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's, it has a Sasuke thing where it's kind of evil, but it could maybe be useful. What's it called? It's like Amamuretsu or yeah. something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. I think he got it from Itachi. But, uh, I, I always keep thinking of Tiramisu when I say that. But... <laughs> you know, uh, one thing, though, that's uh, on the other side of this is Swamp Thing and Constantine and kind of like that one page or panel of Swamp Thing and the grass and the, the tree of its yeah. wonder and the lights. It just looks amazing. I was just saying, what is going on with that like, Alan Moore thing? So I'm assuming that it's he's uh, clearly sold him out sure no he's clearly dying oh is that what you think yeah he's i suppose yeah he says about retirement doesn't he yeah and it clearly it might be a lot because he's been doing so much outside of the green that he might have lost his connection with it yeah so he you know i suppose that explains why he's got the long alan moore look yeah so from my understanding swamp thing plus this issue he might have been doing too much Justice League stuff that he's sh- uh, shied away from his duties as the guardian of, uh, you know, life of plants and stuff like that and uh, nature, I guess. Um, and, you know, nature, it cycles. You know, eventually, he w- if that were to happen, he knew that, I, you know, I, I just wish there was a kind of backstory to this in terms of like he knew this was going to happen but he took it anyways so that he could help out the Justice League but that might be asking too much um, especially since nobody really cared about something Tinian does yeah but uh, yeah I, I just I'm excited about that especially how Constantine even though he's not a main person on the team he seems like it's he's going to be he's popping in. yeah he's popping in and out to kind of assist and like I think he talked to Zatanna first and now he's talking to Swamp Thing and it's kind of like it's what's the, what's the thing I'm thinking of? It's it's like when you know that the team is done for, like you know the OG Justice League Dark team, like they're all kind of fading away in a bit, and they all know it. Like even yeah. Zatanna says, like magic is dying, and that's all that keeps me here. So also, chat says the villain for the Wonder Woman, nah, that little story bit is called Hecate. Yeah. Or was it? Yeah, Hecate, whatever it's called. Hecate. I can't. I can't. Or Hecate. Yeah. He Kate, but um, you know, before that, I just really loved. Uh, and as I end this issue, so we can end, you know go to your last one. I just really loved the way Upside Down Man appeared out of nowhere, and it's, he's so cool, dude. Just the way they showed it. So it, the, the panels leading up to it, right? So Doctor Fate leaves. Purple light flashes. His dark background. They're they're mm-hmm. getting headaches. You see feet, and Wonder Woman's face just like screaming, and then you just see it like now. Who should I eat for? Dude, it just was a great kind of build-up, I would say. And Tini is so great at this. He's so great at building up. And, uh, I, you know, one thing that I don't know if you'd be able to portray this 
uh, unlike movies, you know, in Avengers Age of Ultron, we always, I mean, Age of Ultron, uh, Infinity War, we always say one of the best parts is the s sanctuary part where you like see something outside and then you start walking and uh, when Tony's yeah, walking outside, yeah. yeah, like the kind of build up to it, right? I, I, yeah, that, that would be how it it, it'd be hard to portray in comics, it. but I, I mean, you know, having the darkness, the feet, her face. Some people would just straight up just give the the villain away like that, but the little build up I think made it really good. So he's, he's so creepy. He's creepy as fuck. Dude, yeah, he is creepy. I'm I'm excited. So it's gonna be like you know, and bring out a Naruto reference. It's probably gonna be the uh, what are the people who are hunting that the Katsuki, right? Like they're gonna be the 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 people who are sent out from the uh, the main bad guys, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'm down. This is such a great series so far, this arc, and uh, I would love for this to be an animated series or anything to be, like, adapted. I just think Tinian is a great... I'm so glad he came to Justice League Dark. Eventually, he'll get, like, actual Justice League or maybe even Justice Society, and I'm down for that, too. Can we get a Marvel place? I mean, right. this, I, I, I mean let's get Donny Cates to DC. No, uh, yeah. That's the, look, you, you took everyone we had anyway. You took Tom King, you took Bendis, you got G. Willow Wilson at the minute. Yeah. Like, fair trade. Like, <laughs> no. Share the toys. Give Tinian, us Tinian. Nope, nope Tinian's Give great. us Tinian's. Only fair. You've got Snyder, you, you know, you can keep his trash. Like, just let us have Tinian. It's only fair. Nope, nope, it's, nope. it's one writer for, like, four. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for that one. I will forever demand Tinian comes over to Marvel. Mm -hmm. At least for something. Like, just give me a mini series like for Scarlet Witch or something, because I need to see it. But um, onto probably the biggest surprise I had this week. Um, West Coast Avengers number one by Kay Thompson, uh, Stefano Caselli, and Triano Farrell. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Um, I wasn't really like, this book was not on my radar at all. I was like, oh, West Coast, that's cool. Like, they're just a fun, funky little book filled with people that can't sell books. And it's exactly what it is here. But the way, like, Thompson does it, it's like, oh, it's all based on a reality show. Like, the way the team gets funding is Quentin Quire's got a reality show and, uh, you know, they, they have to have these cameras on 24-7. And it's very much a first t issue of a team book. Like, it's, they're just building everything up. And it's like, oh, you got Kate Bishop as the leader. Like, he doesn't really want to be the leader, but she kind of has to be. She's, like... The, it, gets very meta with it it's like why isn't there anyone on the west coast and it's, you know who even is in the west coast that can be on a super like an, an avengers team quote you know luckily she knows america so america shows up uh, clint's already there but clint's gonna be jumping in and out of the team um quentin choir shows up obviously because he's got the reality show stuff uh her boyfriend's there who's the other one? Oh yeah and when she's looking for everyone gwen paul's just like oh hey right, we're friends and it's like you're hired and it's just literally a reality show for the first issue. Like, it's really fun. If you want an Avengers book but something completely different, I suggest checking it out. There's Land Sharks. So if you like Land Sharks, there's a ton of those in this issue. And uh, and a giant Tigra. So if you're a fan of the original West Coast Avengers, uh, Tigra's on that team, and Tigra's now like 100 foot tall. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just a really fun issue. Really fun. Did you read this one or did you? No, I didn't. One? I honestly didn't get to. They, uh, they didn't allow it at uh, my campus's website. Your campus sucks. Uh, they didn't allow yeah. me to, you know. Uh, um. I mean, but no, it's like, it's definitely, if you want something a bit different, a bit lighthearted, it's kind of, I can see it replacing the Uncanny Avengers slot where you want the little more personal bit, but, but yeah, it's definitely. Also, there's a Broduck in this as opposed to Moduck. I can't think what was the acronym. Biorobotic organism designed own overwhelmingly for kissing. So if you're going to get offended by that, get offended. But it's funny as shit. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much going to do it for us. Uh, it's a good show. Um, mm. I, uh, I, I'm, off, I'm off Titan, so stop. Don't ask me about any Titans book. Team Are you or... officially gonna get off Titans now? Then? Well, actually, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably catch up, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm off it, but I mean, I don't know. probably, probably so. I don't know. I just they didn't interest me that as get... much. Wait to the end of the arc and then yeah. read it. That's yeah. what I'd probably do. That's what I tend to do for a lot of um, books I fall behind on. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that'll bring us to the end of this. So thanks to everyone in the chat for hanging out with us. Uh, and we'll catch you next time.